Hi guys, uh, so I'm Jonathan Fuchs. And I'm Jay Quinn Menninger, and this is our attempt at a real-time, offline, handwriting recognition system that uses convolutional neural nets and socket I.O. Yes, uh, so the idea came from uh, using World Wide Whiteboard uh, to when somebody was to write a letter, have it recognize that letter um, using a neural net in order to process that and recognize the handwriting. And convert it to text. Yes, and convert it to text. Of course. Um, so just to show you what the inputs look like, uh, if you remember this, it's been like a couple weeks, but uh, any stroke that you made is stored as an array uh, of the start point and the end point. And then uh, it has all these, all these are just iterations that are taken at a set timeout. And so um, we figured that we could, uh, based on the collisions, this determine which strokes belong to uh, a unique letter. So, you know, that we have this collision between the A uh, branches, but if we wrote B over here, then that would be a separate letter. Um, and then also uh, determine, uh, based on the, the max and the min values, be able to uh, create a box around it and then say that that's a letter and then send it into the neural net. So the problem with this was that our data was uh, too sparse. It was very difficult to normalize. And the training sets that we tried to find online had only 60 units, data units in it. Uh, so we decided to switch to a style of handwriting recognition called offline handwriting recognition, where you pass in an entire 128 by 128 picture uh, as input and feed it into the neural net and train it with that. And we were able to find a data set with 800,000 different data units, each with 62 different letters, or all the digits plus all the letters, capital and lowercase. Uh, uh, we were successfully yeah. able to convert those from the black-white images into pixels, uh, uh, arrays. Um, and we learned a lot in the process. Like we learned, we taught ourselves Python. Um, we taught ourselves uh, the TensorFlow. Um, API. API. Uh, and we very nearly made something that worked. Yes, so that probably knows. our biggest problem during this time was in order to run this uh, in, I don't know, maybe less than a day, to be honest. In order to train this in less than a day, we needed a GPU. He brought in a GPU on his Windows computer, and we spent mm, like 24 hours trying to yeah. configure it and couldn't get it to work. Yeah. So Visual code does not play nice, so you're yeah. coding on Macs. With a CPU, it probably would have taken close to a week to train, I think. I'm not 100% uh, yeah. sure on that. But I, the, the sample of uh, data they had was for 28 by 28 uh, picks, uh, and that would have taken like eight hours, and ours was, or maybe 10. They said with a GPU, with a GPU. and 80,000 input units of 28 by 28 pictures, it would have taken three to four hours. We had 800,000 units with no GPU and much more data yeah. in those units. So. so the GPU was necessary, and the fact that we couldn't get it to work sort of made this uh, something that wasn't going to be able to happen. Um, but uh, we learned a lot about how the convolutional neural net works. Uh, during your tech talk, you talked about neural nets and uh, the convolution uh, aspect adds a lot of depth to it, and that was really interesting to learn about. Yep. Allows us to take uh, to, to take advantage of the 2D images and the, the shape and dimension of those 2D images, as opposed to passing in a flat vector. And we were able to learn a lot more from images that way, yeah. and make it the predictor much more accurate. Unfortunately, we weren't able to fully train it. And that's what we've done. For